every one of us that's gathered here on today God touch each and every one of their needs bless our pastors in their absence every minister and elder that's gathered here on today God God Jesus we love you God we love you God with all our heart on today God we give you everything we want to empty ourselves on today God we want to prostrate before you and empty ourselves and leave it at this altar God Cleanse us of our sins. Cleanse us of our iniquities, oh God. Wash us clean, God, so that we may be white as snow, God. Lord God, help us to walk in humility. Help us to press towards the mark of the higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus, not to walk after the flesh, but after your spirit, God. Lord Jesus, hide a word in our heart today, God, so that when we leave today, we will have energy for the rest of the week, God. Lord Jesus, help us to just run this race with patience help us to run this race with energy knowing that this this race is not for the swift but to those that endure to the end god bless this church god and every each and every member god lord jesus help us to just do what is right and to follow after your precepts god bless the word on today god and everybody that, that the visitor that come today let them see jesus let them see you god all these things we thank you in your wonderful and precious name we say amen scripture says make a joyful noise unto the lord all ye lands serve the lord with gladness come before his presence with singing know ye that the lord he is god it is he that has made us and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pastures enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Sing it again from the top. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter his gates, I will enter his gates 
with thanksgiving in my heart I will enter his courts with praise I will say this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice for he has made me glad 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 I will rejoice for he has made me glad he has made me glad he has made me glad I will rejoice for he has made me glad this is the day this is the day this is the day that the Lord has made that the Lord has made I will rejoice I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it oh this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it this is the day this is the day that the Lord has made come on give him praise him praise he woke you up this morning to see a brand new day oh what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer oh what peace we often forfeit oh what needless pains we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer every trials and tribulation have we trials and tribulation is there trouble anywhere we should never be discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows our every weakness take it to the Lord in prayer what a friend Hallelujah. What a that's Christ our Savior for he has died for us he rose from the dead with us that we may have a better life and, and redemptions nothing like redemption he covered us in his blood he healed us he saved us saved us from ourselves we don't know what we're doing he's a wonderful God hallelujah salvation and glory honor and power unto the Lord our God for the Lord our God is mighty the Lord our God is omnipotent the Lord our God he is one Hallelujah, hallelujah, come on congregation, join me, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God, for the Lord our God is mighty, the Lord our God is omnipotent, the Lord our God, He is wonderful. All praises, all praises be to the King of kings and the Lord our God. He is wonderful. All praises. 
Father, we don't need any other reason to praise you because you are God. There is none like you, Father, and there will be none like you. You are the greatest, the biggest, the most, and the most high. Father, we give you glory right now as we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for healing today. We pray for healing for Ida Island, Zane Dyer, Dolores Bacon, Wanda Devro, Wanda Hayes, Joyce Pennock, Donna Riddick, Michelle Addison, Dolores Bonds, Alex Super, Kenya Banks. And we pray for comfort for Rennell Smith and our aunt. And I pray also for Michelle Addison. See, Father, right now we have to come from our heart, Father. Nothing else works. And Father, we pray for Michelle because she has to get another stint, God. And Father, we praying that these words that we pray would touch your heart and your healing hands would come forth, God, and touch her like never before. Father, this surgery that her, that she needs, Father, I'm asking you to go by there and touch the doctor to make this procedure the best it can be. And Father, as you touch the doctor, I pray that you would put confidence in Michelle and let her know that it's you that's doing the surgery. It's you that's doing the operation. It's you that's going to change. It's you that's going to move. It's you that's going to heal. Father, we claim that right now. And Father, as we pray right now, if there's any sickness or disease in this room, God, we pray from the bottom of our hearts that you would go and touch right now, Lord. Touch in the name of Jesus. Touch in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray healing for Elder Scott, Father. Touch him right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for us, Minister Alfreda's sister, Tammy. Lord, we pray for Joe Walker. Father, we have to pray for our pastor, Lord. We pray that you would touch right now in the name of Jesus and heal him right now. Father, right now we ask you by the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit to touch like never before. We ask you to bless Brother Joe Walker. Touch him, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for my Carrie and her granddaughter, Brother Fred Gray, God. We pray that you would touch him, God, in the name of Jesus. Minister Joyce Burton, her sister Lloyd Lolita. Lord, we pray for Sister Betty Marcus, Betty Marcus, her husband Martin, Yvonne Maders Jordan, Nicole, Bishop Sarpy, Denise Ferguson, mother. We pray for Lynn Anderson, total healing in her eyes. Father, we pray for Minister Deborah Jones and her daughter. We pray for the comfort of the Gibbs family. We pray for Lisa Bland, Harris, and her family. Sister Sharon Bland died. Sister Sharon. Oh, God, we pray right now, Father, that you comfort. Because, Father, nobody can do it like you. Father, we may have words of comfort, but you are the comforter. You are the one that can bless Sister Tammy right now in the loss of her mother. Father, I pray that you would go and touch 
not just her, but the whole family. And let them realize that only you, God, knows all. Only you can do all. So we pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that your power would come forth and touch and comfort right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for Elder Scott's family, for Cousin Wayne. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, it's hard when you lose someone that you love. But Father, right now we know that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. We know that all things are in your hands, Father. We pray for Sister Sandra Harris' family. Her aunt died. Father, we know right now that only you can bless. Only you can keep. Only you can strengthen. Only you can change the situation. Father, I pray for our children, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, it's hard sometimes because... This is a time when I have never seen so many dark and cold children. Father, I watch them. And you speak to them and they don't have a response, Father. But I know, God, that you can say something to them to draw them to you. And Father, I pray, the Lord, that you would... Give us words that would move them right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you would give us words to speak to our co-workers, words to speak to our, our family members, words to speak to our mother and father, words to speak to our sister and brother, words to speak to our nieces and nephews, words to speak to our cousins, God, to draw them to you, God. Lord, we pray that power would emanate from us, God, in such a way, God, that they will no longer see us, but they will see the God in us. Father, I pray for this country right now in the name of Jesus. Father, it's getting to be where we don't know which way to direct, direction to go. We don't know what's, who to believe in and who to trust. But Father, if your people, which are called by your name, would humble themselves, seek your face, turn and pray, and turn from the wicked ways. The word of God tells us that you would hear from heaven and heal this land. So Father, I pray right now that all of the people who are called Christians, the people that call themselves your children, God, instead of fighting over who's right and who's wrong, God, we pray right now that anointing would fall in such a way that we would be on one accord, have one heart, one mind, living for you, God, standing for you on the power that only you can give. And this nation would see a difference. This nation would feel the power of God. Father, I pray this right now, Lord. I believe it, that if we would come together, this nation would see the power of you that they have never seen before. And I claim it, God. So these and all prayers today, God, I pray this by faith and in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God, amen? And he is worthy of all glory, all honor, and all praise. Hallelujah. We bless his name on today, amen? We magnify and glorify his name because he is worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. There is none like Jesus. Never has been, never will be, amen? The one true and only living God. Somebody give him a hand praise in the house. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. So good to see you all on this morning. Good to see you all. Good to see Brother Stan in the house. We know that he had a ailment. Where's Stan at? Where you go? He's probably upstairs with the money. Okay. You know he had an ailment. He had, uh, I believe he said he had, um, his colon was inflamed. Uh, but uh, he's, he's on the mend, so we thank God for that. 
Good to see him in the house in Jesus' mighty name. Good to see you all in the house. And uh, obviously some folks is on vacation. <laughs> huh? Some folks is on vacation. That's a good thing. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. We all need some time of rest. But it's good to see Mom Sebro back from her time away. Amen. Saw her for the first time last week, and she shared with me how powerfully the Lord used her in an eternal way to change the eternal destination of 15 folks who she led to Christ while on vacation. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what you doing on vacation? Hmm. Hallelujah. What you doing on vacation? We thank God. You know, since, 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 since we all family here, and we all are family, and I mean, we got a smaller number today, I wanted to do some, a little something different today. Could we, I know we're all kind of spread out, but could we, could we just, I, I just, I just feel led to teach today. Is that all right? Can I teach today? Amen. Can, can we just get some folks to come into the middle? Let's maybe try to get in the middle. We're, we're kind of spread out and we're a little smaller number today because folks are on vacation. But uh, just, just come to the middle if you can. Just, just come to the middle. Make a new friend. I know it may not be your usual seat. I know it may not be your usual seat. But just, just come to the middle. Make a new friend. Say hi to a brother and sister in Christ. Say hello. I know I don't usually sit here, but I'm coming here today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I know it's a little different. I know it's a little different. I know it's a little different. I, I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. But we might as well just come together. Oh, did I do something here? Oh, I didn't want that up yet. Oh, okay. Uh, huh? Amen, amen. Is it, let me make sure. Is it on? I, I check that thing there. I think it's got it here. All right. Oh, okay. So when I'm ready, just do that. Yeah, okay. All right. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Giving honor to our pastors as they are taking some time and getting some respite. I hope all of us at some point this summer get some time off and get some respite. I know my wife is going out of town this coming week, leaving me all home alone. I got to fend for myself. Oh, man. I'm going to be eating a bunch of hot dogs. Eating some hot dogs. I guess I'll make some spaghetti. Something. Amen. But it's good to see you all in the house in Jesus' mighty name. I do give honor to my wife. Amen. Who is in the house? Can my, can my lovely wife stand? Where you at, babe? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Amen. Amen. Thank God for her. I tell you, I thank God because my, you know, it's just my wife's awesome, and it's two things I'm truly grateful for as a husband. I'm grateful that I don't have a jealous wife. I'm, I am truly grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. I don't have a jealous wife. None what so bit. And I'm grateful that I have a wife who supports me in ministry. I'm grateful that I have a wife who supports me in ministry. I remember some years ago, the Lord led us to start a Bible study in Wilmington, Delaware at the YMCA. And for 10 years, every Tuesday night, you could find us there having Bible study and providing free dinner to the community and to folks who were residents there in a low-income housing project. And God just moved in a mighty way. And I remember the first time I had to go away on business on a Tuesday night. And uh, the, the Bible study was still relatively young. 
at the time. And so she had to take over and run the Bible study. Now it's her, it's, it was my sister, sister-in-law as well, and some, some other folks. Um, but a lot of the folks that came were, were, were men who were in the, the shelter home at the, at the YMCA. And so, you know, you got 30, 40, 50 men up in there. And some may not have taken their meds, if you know what I'm talking about. But she handled that thing. You hear me? She handled that thing. She had it in control. And so I had to go away to D.C. And I was so calm in my spirit. I have no issues whatsoever. So she's always been there supporting. She's always given uh, herself in ministry and always been a support for me. And I truly thank God for that. Amen. I truly thank God also for our pastors. I thank God for this opportunity. And I thank God for y'all. Y'all don't, y'all don't know what y'all have done for me, what y'all have done for us in this house. You truly have blessed us. Um, I, I'll say this, you know, Fresh Anointing is not a perfect church. And you know why it's not a perfect church? Because we here. Because <laughs> you here. Amen. But I will say this. If you want a place where you can grow and learn about God, maybe in a way that you've never seen and grown before, this is a house where you can do it. Because the word is coming forth in this house. I, I am steadily amazed, steadily amazed at the, the, at the, at the folks who get behind uh, this sacred altar and bring the word and do it with such power and authority. We are blessed in this house, y'all. We are blessed in this house. We are blessed in this house. Such anointed folks who love God and are on fire for Jesus. So I thank God for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long. If you can, turn to Matthew 20. We're going to go from verse 20 to 27. But then going to also ask you to turn over to Matthew, uh, I believe it's 23. Yes, Matthew 23, 10 and 12. So Matthew 20, 20 through 27. And then also Matthew 23, 10 through 12. Also give a hand praise for our musicians. Amen. Amen. Thank God for them brothers. Thank God for them brothers. I wish I could play something. I ain't got no skills whatsoever. I don't even think I can play a harmonica. I'm serious. I don't think I can play a harmonica. I ain't got no skills. But I thank God. I thank God that he said when you come into his house, make a joyful noise. Not a beautiful one because I can't hang. I ain't got a beautiful one. I'm just glad he said make a joyful one. In the name of Jesus. I can give him some joy. I ain't got no beauty with it, though. I'm hurting on that, but I thank God. Matthew 20, 20 to 27, and also Matthew 23, 10 to 12. And do, I, I do not endeavor to be before you long on today. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the word. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence. Thank you, Father, for your word, for your word is life, <laughs> for your word is truth. Your word is healing. Your word is deliverance. Your word is everything, oh God. It's your word that changes us from the inside out. And so, Father, I ask you to have your way on today. I, I, I can't preach, God, but you can. <laughs> I can't teach, but you can. So I ask you to, I, I want to get out the way. I don't, it's not about me. It's all about you in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Father, we make our hearts our minds and our spirits are attentive to hear from you on today. Send forth your word with power and authority. Change us from the inside out in the mighty name of Jesus. Mold us and shape us into the image of your dear son and our savior, Jesus Christ. We bless you. We adore you. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Matthew 20, 20 to 27, and the word of the true and living God reads, Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. 
And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on thy left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. And he saith unto them, You shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give. But it shall be given to, uh, for them, to them for whom it is prepared of my father. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. But Jesus called unto them and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. And they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Turn to Matthew 23, 10 to 12. Matthew 23, verses 10 through 12. Neither be ye called masters for one just one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen for the word. You know, for the last several years, uh, our pastor has been teaching us on the kingdom of God. Amen? The kingdom of God. Uh, our theme this year, as you can see, is more kingdom will be seen in 2017. So I want to stay in that theme, in that direction this morning. And I want to teach on the subject, the upside down kingdom. <laughs> the upside down kingdom. The upside down kingdom. Now, let me try to set the stage here for a moment, if, for a moment, if you don't mind. I, I need to, to take a step back. Uh, let's look real, real, real quickly at, again, our, our, one of our key scriptures here, Matthew 20. 20 to 27. And then let's, let's dig into this a little bit. Let's, let's dig into this a little bit. Then came to him, him being Jesus, the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, what wilt thou? She saith unto him, grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand, where? In thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, you know not what you ask. See, what we have here is the mother of James and John. And James and John, as we know, were two of the 12 disciples. And so James and John uh, were following Christ. And I believe this is how the story plays out. This is, what, this, is what, this is what I believe happened. So James and John are following Jesus wherever he goes. You know, Jesus is new on the scene. Amen. And so he's going around and he's doing miraculous things day in and day out. And James and John, being two of the twelve, are following him wherever he goes. So one day they're with him and they see him heal a blind man. They go back to their family. They're like, y'all, 
This man named Jesus, he healing blind folks. You got to see this. He's going back and telling them this. The next day they go out, they're following Jesus. And this time they see him heal a lame man. And they go back to their family like, Lord, you are not going to believe what happened today with Jesus. He healed a maimed man. I'm telling y'all, this man ain't like nobody we'd have ever seen before. The next day they go out, they're following Jesus. And they see him uh, feed thousands with five loaves and two fishes. And they go home and they're like, what kind of man? And their mom is just sitting there and she's listening and she's taking it all in. And she starts to think, well, wait a minute. They're talking about Jesus and everywhere I go around Jerusalem, I'm hearing nothing about this man named Jesus. Everybody's talking about Jesus. And so I even heard folks talking about he's setting up a new kingdom. Now understand, at this time, who's in charge? Come on, thank you very much. At this time, Rome is large and in charge. It's their kingdom. They are on the scene. And so the Jews and James and John being Jews and their, and their mother being Jews, they thought that the Messiah, when he would come, would set this kingdom in order. He's going to set this kingdom in order. So all this must be playing in our mind. They know they're waiting for the Messiah. You know, James and John are coming back, telling their family, telling their mother all about this Jesus. Everywhere she's going, she's hearing about this Jesus. And she must have been saying, this man is setting up his own kingdom. He's setting up his own kingdom. Everywhere I go. It's Jesus. I hear two people talking about it's a new kingdom. He's even challenging the Pharisees and the Sadducees, y'all. He's setting up his own kingdom. He's setting up his own kingdom. Oh, and wait a minute. My sons know him. Hold the bus. He, he, he's setting up his own kingdom. And my sons know this Jesus. So what does she do? She calls them. She says, James and John, come here. James, John, come here. Look. I need y'all to take me to this Jesus. All right? Jesus, come on up. I need y'all to take me to this Jesus. Because I hear about all this stuff y'all telling me he's doing. And, and, and everywhere I go, I hear his name. I need to meet this. Can, can we go? Come on, y'all need to take me to this Jesus. Oh, here. Just Jesus. Just Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. And so what does she do? She says, okay, James, y'all good. Y'all good. Y'all good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And so... She gets to Jesus, and what does the word say? The word says she comes to him doing what? Worshiping him. So here she comes, and she's like, okay, okay, I, I know my boys. They, they know Jesus. I know he's setting up his kingdom, so he must be a king. Let me worship him. Oh, you are so awesome. You are glorious. You are mighty. Don't, ain't nobody like you. I know you are the king to come. I, I, you know, I, I heard all these wonderful things you're doing. You are just awesome in all your ways. There is, I mean, who, I mean I'm just overwhelmed to be in your presence. I want to give you glory. I want to give you honor. I want to give you praise. Oh, my goodness. You are just awesome. And what does Jesus say? What you want? He said, what you want? What do you want? And she says, well, now that you ask. <laughs> you see them two 
dudes over there? Those is my sons. There's James. Stand up, James. Stand up, James. Isn't he handsome? Tall. Huh? He's a good, young, fine man. I t- you ain't going to find. I mean, James, he, he's the cream of the crop. And his brother, John. You see John? Oh, John. What a, what a just bright young man. He, he, he is just dynamic in his ways. And um, I was wondering, when, when you set up your kingdom, is there any way that one could be on your left and the other could be on your right, Jesus? Can they, can they, can they sit there? And Jesus replies to her, woman, you know not what you ask. <laughs> you know not what you ask. He goes on to tell her, he says, look, can you drink of the cup that I shall drink of? In other words, I haven't drank this cup yet, but I'm going to drink it. And, and can you be baptized with the baptism with which I have been baptized. And they said, we can. Now, Jesus understood that uh, she wasn't coming to him because she knew him. She wasn't worshiping him because she knew him. She was worshiping him because she wanted something from him. Uh huh. See, what you need to understand is this. Worship doesn't always get you what you want. <laughs> if worship ain't from a heart that is true and pure, <laughs> worship ain't always going to get you what you want. She thought she was going to get on the end if she just came in and started bowing down, bowing down. But Jesus said, you don't even know me. (laughs) You don't know from what I came. You don't know from what I'm going to do. You have no idea what you have asked for. Some of us like to use worship thinking that it's going to get us what we want. But if it ain't from the heart, (laughs) it ain't going to make no room for you. So he goes on and he says, look, what what is it that you want? She tells him. He says, you don't even know what you're asking for. He says, can you drink from the cup from which I shall drink? Well, what cup is that, Lord? You remember when he was in the garden before he, he, he gave his passion? What did he say? He said, Father, if there's any way, what? Let this cup pass from me. So what he was saying to her, what he was saying to James and John is, can you really drink from this cup of suffering? You want to be on my left? You want to be on my right? You want to be in my kingdom? Can you really drink from this cup of suffering? And can you be baptized with the baptism wherewith I was baptized? Can you be filled with the Holy Ghost? Remember when he was baptized and the Holy Ghost came down like a dove and sat upon him. Amen. And so he was saying to James and John and to their mother, can you really drink of this cup of suffering And can you allow yourself to be full of the Holy Ghost so much so that it's no longer you but him? Uh, I got a question for you. Could it be that suffering and being baptized in the Holy Spirit are requirements for entering the kingdom? (laughs) Could it be That suffering and being filled with the Holy Ghost are requirements for entering the kingdom. Did he not say that to them? He said, look, you want to be on my left? You want to be on my right? 
You want to be in my kingdom. Are you really ready to suffer? And are you really ready to give up yourself? Are you really ready to give up yourself and let it be all of me in the name of Jesus? I'm talking about the upside down kingdom. And he saith unto them, you know what, James and John, you're right. You're right. You're right. You will. He, he starts to prophesy. <laughs> they don't even know he prophesying. He starts to prophesy. He says, you know what, boys, you're right. You are going to drink of the same cup. And you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm. Do this. Got some homework for you. Got some homework. Get your pen out. Get your homework. Here's your homework. Take this home with you. We turn this into a little Bible study. Is that all right? Take this your homework. Here's your homework. Google this. Bing this. How the apostles died. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Bing that. <laughs> Google that. How the apostles died. Jesus went to prophesy, and he said, oh, yeah, James and John. <laughs> you will, in fact, drink of this cup. And we all know in the book of Acts that the Holy Spirit descended, and they were filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost. So he went to prophesying on them. Then from there, the, her the ten heard it. Now, the ten heard this conversation that was going on. They heard, they heard, uh, James and John's mother asked if they could sit on the right and the left. And they heard it, and they got indignant. Well, who do they think they is? What are we, just chopping? Hold on. We walking with them too. Huh? We, get, we didn't left our family too. I got kids at home looking for me. I got a wife at home wondering I'm coming back. So what, 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 what's up with us? Why are y'all supposed to be the two sitting on the left and the right? What you done did that's so special? Amen. What's so good about you? That's right. We don't do that in this church, do we? Uh, <laughs> well, are they in charge of that ministry? They ain't been here as long as I've been here. Well, why, why are they in charge of that? Well, who, who called them a minister or an elder? But Jesus called them all together. He said, look, come here, y'all. Come here, come here, come here. He says, look, and this is really what I want to concentrate on today. In verse 25, Jesus says, but Jesus called them unto him and said, you know, that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion. Princes have a kingdom. And these princes in their kingdom of this world, they exercise dominion. And they that are great in this kingdom, they exercise authority. But it shall not be so among you. Our kingdom will be upside down. <laughs> it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister, your, your servant, your caretaker. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to what? minister and to give his life for a ransom for many then he goes down to verse number chapter number 23 and he tells the disciples this neither be ye called master for one is your master even Christ but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant and whosoever shall exalt himself uh-huh 
Who shall ever shall exalt himself, uh huh, shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be what? Exalted. For those who are citizens of the kingdom of this world, God's kingdom makes no sense. To the citizens of the kingdom of this world, God's kingdom is foolishness. For the kingdom, for the citizens of the kingdom of this world, God's kingdom is a waste of time and it surely is a waste of money. To the citizens of the kingdom of this world, God's kingdom is upside down. Turning the other cheek does not make sense to the citizens of the kingdom of this world. Giving 10% of your money. Help me, Holy Ghost. Giving 10% of your money when you have none to give does not make sense to the kingdom of this world. When your enemy, <laughs> when your enemy is hungry and thirsty, Giving them a meal and a cool drink of water is not what you do. If you got them down, you what? Keep them down. Put your foot on their neck. Don't let them up. Don't make no sense to the kingdom of this world. And when you finally make it to the top of your pursuit, when you are finally the head honcho, when you are finally large and in charge, when you are the supervisor on the scene, it don't make no sense for you to make of yourself no reputation and to become a servant. Makes no sense. God's kingdom is upside down when compared to the kingdom of this world. What this world calls right, God calls wrong. What this world calls good, the Lord calls bad. When the world says go, God says what? Stop. When the world says stop, God says go. When the world says yes, God says no. When the world says turn left, God says turn right. And the world says that the only way is up, is up. The Lord says the way up. When the world says the only way up is, God says the way up is. Mm. When compared to the kingdom of this world, God's kingdom is upside down. The kingdom of this world says if you're trying to make it to the top of anything, do whatever it is you have to do. Do whatever it is you have to do. When you're trying to get to the top in this world, you do what you got to do. You say what you got to say. Do whatever you got to say. You get anybody out of your way you need to get out of your way. Push them to the side, climb over them, step on them. In this world, you get to the top by any any means necessary. That's what this world says. That's how you get to the top. Even if you got to get help from the Russians. Did I go there? <laughs> Whatever you got to do to get to the top. But in God's kingdom, those who exalt themselves will be abased. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. 
you understand this. The kingdom of this world is consumed with being number one. <laughs> we are consumed with being number one, with being on top. This world does not remember who came in second place. We don't remember that. This world, in this world, we celebrate those who are the kings. Those who are the estes of the world. You know what I mean by estes? The ESTs of the world. You know, who's the strongest? Who's the strong EST? Who's the richest EST? Uh, who's the fastest? S E S T uh, and and who's the prettiest E S T I'm trying to get out the doghouse Ron I'm trying to get out the doghouse I am trying I've been in there so long bro I'm trying to get out the doghouse did this help am I out now am I out I'm trying to get out I'm crawling, man. I'm crawling. I'm crawling. But we are consumed. Who's the fastest? Who's the richest? Who's the strongest? Who's the best? We don't care about number two. All we care about is who's. <laughs> In this kingdom. In this kingdom, we're only consumed with who, consumed with who's number one. But in God's kingdom, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. In God's kingdom, the weak are strong, and the poor are what? Rich. In God's kingdom, the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. In God's kingdom, if you exalt yourself, you'll be brought low. But if you humble yourself, you'll, you'll be exalted. In God's kingdom, the servant is greatest of all. The servant is greatest of all. Maybe the reason we're not seeing God's kingdom fully manifesting in our lives is that we're not truly citizens of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. See, maybe we have a spiritual passport rather than a birth certificate. See, visitors need passports, but citizens have a birth certificate. Uh huh. And, and see, see, sit, pap, those who are visitors, they take their passport and they come into God's kingdom when they want something. Like James and John's mother. She was just a visitor. She was not a citizen. And so she thought she had a passport when she came in with some worship. This is my passport in. I'm going to just tell him how good he is, how awesome he is. I'm going to tell him how great he is. This is my passport to get what I want. And when I'm done, I'm out. But when you are a citizen, you have a birth certificate. And that birth certificate says that you are a citizen of this kingdom. You are entitled to all the rights and privileges. But citizenship also has a cost. Because to whom much is, much is So maybe the question you want to ask your neighbor is this. Turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, maybe you need to train, trade in your passport and get a birth certificate. Mm -hmm. 
Some of y'all may know this, some of y'all may not. I was actually born in Spain. My dad was in the Air Force. I was born in Spain. So that's, that's where I was born. And on my birth certificate, it, will tell, it shows you I was born in Sevilla, Spain. So 18 years passed by. I don't think about this. I was just born in Spain because my dad's in the Air Force. We're here in America. I've been here for years. All of a sudden, a letter comes in the mail from the country of Spain. <laughs> And it says, Brian Ferguson, uh, you were born here, son. And now that you are at the age of 18, you need to declare your citizenship. I was like, huh? <laughs> one, of those, you know, one of them moments like a dog. Hmm? <laughs> you need to declare your citizenship. Oh, and by the way. If you declare that you're Spanish, you got to come back and serve two years in the military. That's required of everyone that turns 18. I said, oh, no, I'm American. <laughs> I'm, I'm good right here. <laughs> I ain't got to go back. <laughs> I love y'all food. <laughs> the beaches are nice. But I'm cool right here. There came a day where I had to make a declaration. Joshua said it on this way. He said, you know, you need to make a decision. Who you going to serve? Amen. <laughs> so are you going to live off a passport or are you going to be a citizen? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, let's be citizens of God's kingdom. Of God's kingdom. Let's be citizens. Let's have a made up mind. Today I'm here to tell you that the upside down kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is hiring. Mm -hmm. He's hiring. Amen. Jesus Christ is hiring today. He's got a help wanted sign up. Jesus has job openings in his upside down kingdom. He has a lot of job openings. For the harvest is plentiful, but his, his servants are few. He has a lot of job openings because many are called, but few are chosen. He has a lot of jobs openings because the road to his upside kingdom is narrow and few travel thereby. You know, the Bible tells us the way to Christ, his road is narrow. Mm, it's a narrow road. But the road to hell is wide. And a lot of folks is gone. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the Bible says that hell has enlarged itself. Right. They, they down there talking about, move over, please. I, I need, can, you, can you give me an inch? I, you all up on me like that? Can you just give me an inch? <laughs> Jesus' road is narrow and few travel thereby because few folks want to be servants. Everybody wants to be the king. <laughs> Both my wife and I love to cook. But when she's in the kitchen, I don't go in. <laughs> and when I'm in the kitchen, she don't come in. You know, she can be in there cooking. I'll just walk through the kitchen. <laughs> I had no plans on staying. <laughs> and she give me a... Too many cooks in the kitchen. Too many chiefs. Don't nobody want to be a servant. But what you don't realize is that when you humble yourself, God will exalt you. He will exalt you. But you got to have a heart of a servant. You got to have a heart of a servant. 
in his upside down kingdom, the king will gird himself and he will get on his knees and wash the feet of those who should be washing his. Before he went to the cross, he gathered them all together. He said, sit down. I'm going to show you something. So they sat down. He girded himself. Here he is, the king of kings. I got that bullshit. The Lord of lords. Your God. Your creator. Your maker. You don't have a meal unless he gives it to you. You don't breathe unless he gives it to you. Your heart won't beat unless he gives it to you. And he says, let me show you something. Let me show you about my kingdom. <laughs> I know what they're doing out here in this kingdom, but let me show you my kingdom. Give me your feet. Put them in my hands. Mm -hmm. I know they dirty. I know that you ain't that the nails ain't cut right. I know they're not painted perfectly. I know they got these little bumps here and these little bumps there, but give me your feet. Let me wash them. Let me wash them. Let me show you my kingdom. You ain't gonna be like everybody else telling folks what to do. Letting them call you mess. But in my kingdom, you're going to humble yourself. You're going to have the heart of a servant. You're going to put on an apron. And even though they should be serving you, you're going to serve them. Because I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. Even though I should be coming in on the finest of stallions, in the finest chariot this world has ever seen. I'm going to come in on a donkey. I'm going to come in on an ass. Whose kingdom do you want to belong to? Whose kingdom do you want to belong to? Do you want to belong to this kingdom? Where everybody's fighting over each other, you get out my way. You get, get, I'm first. How you want to deserve, you want to be a citizen of the kingdom where you humble yourself and do season, let God exalt you. I told folks many times, if you ever want to bless me with a gift and get me some business cards, don't put no title on it. Just put servant. Amen. Servant. Servant. We get so caught up with titles. Titles. How many DDs you got after your name? I ain't got no Ds. None. But I thank God that I'm a citizen of his kingdom. And I thank God that I am full of his spirit. And I thank God that I'm willing to drink of his cup. It took me some time to get there. <laughs> I wasn't ready to drink of that cup first. What? Suffering. Humbling myself. What? to do with God. I, every day supposed to be Friday. Jesus paid it all. <laughs> and he did pay for all of your sins. But that suffering does something to you after you have then I'll strengthen you, settle you, and make you perfect. Whose kingdom do you want to belong to?
this world's kingdom or God's upside down kingdom? But the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Where the weak are strong and the poor are rich because of what he has done. I don't know about you, but I want to belong to the upside down kingdom. <laughs> I don't want to have a passport. I want a birth certificate. <laughs> I want it to be known here and abroad that Brian Ferguson church, the true and living God. That for God I live. I love all y'all. Love all y'all. But if y'all walk out this church right now and say we done with Jesus, I'm still sitting here. <laughs> I guess it's me and you, Lord. <laughs> I guess it's me and you. God wants to know whose kingdom do you want to belong to? Aren't you tired of just having half of the benefits? Visitors don't get the full benefits, but the citizens get all the benefits. What are the benefits? Peace in the midst of the storm. Joy when the roof, when the roof caves in and the, fall, and, the water, and the floors fall out. Strength when you don't feel like you can go on anymore. Hmm? Favor when you don't deserve it. <laughs> Goodness and mercy following me all the days of my life. Huh? Power. Healing. Deliverance. Full of love when you should be full of hate. Whose kingdom do you want to belong to? Whose kingdom do you want to belong to? As for me and my house. We want to belong to the upside down kingdom. Hallelujah. The upside down kingdom. Teach me how to serve, Lord. Teach me how to serve. How to serve. How to humble myself. How to serve. To get out of myself and bless someone else. I know I got problems. I know I got issues. My bank account ain't that big. Actually, it's rather low. But God, how can I stop thinking about me and how I can serve you? I know you got all that. <laughs> I know you got all that. I know you got all that at home. I know you got all that on the job. But how can I get out of myself and serve? Because I know if I will abase myself, if I will humble myself under your mighty hand, you will exalt me in due season. What are we doing to serve God? What are we doing to serve one another? In the upside down kingdom, the servant is greatest of all. The servant is greatest of all. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a hand praise in the house. The servant is greatest of all. Jesus is hiring today. <laughs> He's got to sign up. Help wanted. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I don't know about you, but I'd rather serve God in his kingdom than serve man in this kingdom. Ain't nothing like serving God, y'all. 
Ain't nothing like serving him. So the question becomes, have you been a visitor with a passport? Or are you a citizen with a birth certificate? Now, if you've been a citizen with a passport, the good news is this. Today, you can become a citizen. You've been a visitor with a passport. Today, you can become a citizen. No longer estranged from the God of your creation. He who loves you with an everlasting love. And is willing to wash your very feet. But you got to make a choice. You got to make a decision. Will you make a decision that today's the day I'm going to give God my all? I'm no longer going to go in and simply ask him for what I want and then leave. But I want to know him, like Paul said, what? In the fellowship of his suffering. Do you want to be that intimate with God? Or do you just want an arm's length relationship? Hallelujah. God says, I want you. I don't want you to be in my kingdom. I don't want you to serve me. But you got to make a decision. Today, don't let anything or anyone hold you back from the most important decision you will make in your life. This is the moment. This is the hour. Don't let it pass you by anymore. Don't let this question wrestle with you at night. Should I have gotten up? Should I not gotten up? What should I do? If you feel the pull of the Holy Spirit, and you'll know it, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of new life. God is calling, and he wants to know if you will answer. The Bible says, make your election sure. Come on, y'all. If you already know and pray for someone sitting next to you. If you already know and pray for somebody sitting behind you. If you already know and pray for somebody sitting in front of you. If you already know him, pray for somebody sitting to your left or to the right. If you've been a visitor just coming in and going back out and you never made your decision or election sure, today's the day. Come on. God's got work for you in his kingdom. He's hiring servants who he will exalt according to his perfect will for your life. Don't try to be a citizen of this kingdom. This, world's about, this world is on its way out. I don't know about y'all, but, but this world is on its way out. And I am so glad. Because the Lord says when, this is, when all this stuff happens, wars and rumors of wars, what? Look up. Don't be sad. Don't be worried. Don't be fearful. Don't be anxious. Look up. For your redemption draweth nigh. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus, come. <laughs> so I ain't worried. They can do whatever they want. Do it. Do it. The kings of this world are fighting. Go ahead. Fight on. Kings of this world are up against one another. Go ahead. But I serve the king of kings. <laughs> I serve the Lord of lords. <laughs> so I ain't worried. I ain't fearful and I ain't staying up at night sleeping like a baby. Because I know soon my day is coming. We up out of here, y'all. And I am, I ain't worried about it. Ain't worried about it one bit. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you should be worried. <laughs> uh -huh. If you've been trying to live on a passport, Rather than standing strong like a citizen, you should be worried. But you don't have to be.
because you can be on God's side because he's hiring today he's hiring servants anybody want to serve God <laughs> I want to serve him 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 thank you for this opportunity for the power of your word for the truth of your word we thank you for being who you are. You are God all by yourself. And you are so worthy of praise and glory and honor. Lord, we want to be citizens of your upside down kingdom. <laughs> we know what this world's kingdom says. This world kingdom says to exalt yourself to make yourself number one, to let everybody see you, make sure they post you, make sure they follow you. But God, we desire that when they look at us, they see you. May we decrease that you may increase. And may you get the glory and the honor and the praise out of our lives. I ask you to bless these, my brothers and sisters. Keep and guide them and direct them as only you can do. Lord, you know the challenges they're facing right now. Whether it be at home, in their marriages, with their children, in their finances, on their jobs, in their health. Whatever it may be, you know the challenges. It's no surprise to you. But we also know that there's nothing too hard for you. You are more than able. I pray that you would give them the strength to stand still and to see your salvation as you come into that situation and bring healing and deliverance and new life. And so we bless you on today. We honor you on today. We magnify you on today. And we're here to let you know that we answered the call to your job opening to be servants we will leave here today and by the leading of your spirit allow you to show us how we can serve how can we serve how can we serve our spouses how can we serve our children how can we serve our co-workers how can we serve our community? How can we serve your church? We will take our eyes off for ourselves and put them on you that your will may be done. And we know that as we humble ourselves that you will exalt us and get the glory out of our lives. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We praise you because you are our God. And beside you, there is no other. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father, and amen. Amen, 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 amen.